Greetings my brethren and welcome again. When I first started playing Warframe a few years ago, I was overwhelmed with the sheer number of weapons available. There are three types you can bring to a mission, so there are literally thousands of combinations you can bring. As Digital Extremes keeps introducing new weapons and making improvements to existing ones, this is going to change. For today I'm going to focus on primary weapons. Though there are other weapons deserving to be on this list, these are the guns that have served me the best, in no particular order. Strun Wraith. I never thought there would be a day that the Tiger's Prime took a backseat to another shotgun, but here we are. It's hard to acquire, but definitely worth it. The Strun Wraith is not a pretty weapon, but it makes up for it with a good sized clip, good pellet spread, and some damn fine damage. Load it with some punch through and get used to its single shell reload mechanic and you'll be having a good time. What really sets us apart is its Riven Disposition. Because it's rare, its disposition is a 5. With the right roll, this thing chews through whatever's in front of it like a fat kid at a buffet. Karak Wraith. The very first Riven I got in Warframe was for the Karak. The weapon wasn't that good, but I held on to the Riven because it popped my Riven Cherry. I'm glad I did because the Wraith version was a definite improvement over the original. It has very good accuracy and damage, and a decent fire rate. A bit subjective, but I think the Karak Wraith is also the best looking Grenier weapon. Most of the others being butt ugly helps in that regard. As it stands now, this is my hardest hitting AR, and a favorite to bring to missions. Vectus Prime. It took me a little longer to get into this weapon than I'd like to admit, but I'm glad I did. The damage is phenomenal, has a super quick reload, and it's probably the best looking sniper rifle in the game. If anyone ever wonders how I take out ships in the planes in Valis so quick, it's usually because of this. Phantasma. Don't like the looks or the sound of it, but there's no denying how powerful it actually is. I initially didn't like how it's basically a shotgun version of the Ignis, but it seems to perform even better. The fact that it has an explosive secondary fire is a nice touch. The Phantasma out damages a lot of other weapons equipped with Riven, so can't wait to get my hands on the elusive Riven for this thing. The Amprex. Talk about a crowd clearing device. I'm glad this got buffed when the beam rework happened and doesn't consume ammo like, well, something clever I was going to say, as it used to. It has good crit properties and is pure electricity, which makes it perfect for modding to corrosive or magnetic. The Riven received a recent nerf, but it's still very strong. The Baza. I normally liked bringing bows to spy missions, but the Baza changed that. Even though this weapon has early fall off, it still manages to deal a lot of damage. High crit, high fire rate, super low recoil, decent status. Oh, and it's like a surprise far from one of your friends. Silent but violent. Even if you use this outside of a spy mission, you won't be disappointed. Super Vandal. Like the death of a relative you hate, this was a nice surprise when it got its buff. It has a super fast fire rate, outstanding status, and ammo for days with its enormous clip. The only downside is that it has travel time, but you can turn it into a syndicate weapon with entropy burst that gives you energy, and I'd say that's a fair trade. Even without a Riven, the Super Vandal is still a lot better than its closest relative, the Prisma Tetra, with a Riven. Prisma Gurkata. Okay, so this one is ridiculous, but it's also still quite good. Made more for shredding barn doors than picking off enemies, the purpose of the Prisma Gracata is to take out enemies by sending a shitload of bullets in their general direction. And it does it well. Aside from its insane fire rate, it also has good crit chance of damage, good status, and a bigger clip with faster reload than its regular variant. Though not particularly practical, throw on the Wild Frenzy mod for some extra fun. The Corinth. This to me is the most satisfying shotgun to use. It looks, sounds, and just feels the part that a shotgun should have. The Corinth has the highest crit of all shotguns, so it's a natural candidate for using hunter munitions in higher levels. For the not so high missions, loading it with punch through is great to clear out hallways. Though the ribbon for this also recently got nerfed, I'll be the first in line when a Prime variant comes out. Tiburon Prime. This might just be the best all-purpose AR in the game. As where most only have one firing mode, the Tiburon Prime has three. 
though you'll probably only end up using two of them, it's nice to have options. Maybe DE can start adding alternate modes to some existing ARs. Hint, hint. All the stats are good across the board. The MR lock on this rifle is high, but it's definitely a weapon you should work towards getting if you don't have it already. Some honorable mentions. Like everyone else that has it, I like the Archiplasmor. It is still a great weapon, but its popularity may be its downfall. Its Riven has already seen a massive nerf, and its continued popularity may mean that the worst is yet to come. And the same could be said for the Ignis Wraith. It got a heavy buff a while ago with the beam ray work, so don't be surprised if this changes in the near future. Did your favorites make this list? Or is there something else you think that should be on this list? Let me know in the comments below, and give a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. As always, thanks for tuning in, and take care.